Hello, my name is Jennifer Lovelace. I'm here today with John Reynolds. Um, we're going to talk about his music career, so thank you for coming and joining us. My pleasure. <laughs> um, if you could tell us a little bit about how you got started in music. I know you're from Florence, so how did you start to play? Uh, well, uh, my, uh, my uncle came up uh, and uh, he was going to buy me a 22 rifle. My mom threw a fit. <laughs> and said no, even though we lived on quite a bit of land. But uh, so he said, well, I'll buy you a guitar. And, and uh, I, I, was, I had a set of drums at the time. So uh, we went over to Vine Street to the pawn shops on Vine Street and uh, I found one I liked and, and uh, brought it home. And my, I had a couple friends that, that it kind of plunking around with, with it. Mm -hmm. So they taught me a couple chords and <laughs> that's pretty much how I got into it and into, into playing music. Yeah. I was originally a drummer, uh, uh, yeah, but that didn't last long after I saw the guitar and the bass guitar. You fell in love I, with the guitar? I fell in love with the guitar. I did, yeah. Well, that makes sense. And you said you were in a few bands as a teenager into a early 20s if you could recall the their names for us yeah the first band I was and I couldn't I couldn't tell you what the name of I think it was called the Gene Beavers string band and we played like dances uh, there was probably at least 10 guitar players in that band Wow and uh, uh, just I guess that's why it was the string band <laughs> uh, makes sense we, yeah it does <laughs> we, we, we just played uh, uh, VFWs and mm -hmm. things like that. You know, we we traveled, you know, down around Lexington and Louisville oh, a wow. couple of times, and you know, our parents had to take us, mm -hmm. you know, pile everything in the yeah. car, and away we'd go. So they were good sports about that. They were, yeah, they were, uh, yeah. So what kind of music did you were you drawn to playing that you that you and your friends' bands were? The, uh, we. Well, with the Gene Beavers type of thing, we were uh, we were playing everything. I guess just the popular hits that were on the mm -hmm. radio, and then he got into. Uh, I met a guy named of Jerry Foster and uh, another guy by the name of Lloyd McGlasson, and and uh, uh, we got into playing um, surf music. It mm -hmm. was all instrumental stuff, as it was with the other band. And uh, we got into playing surf music, and we met, uh, uh, had a, three or four other drummers. We ended up with Charlie, a guy by the name of Charlie Brown, playing drums. And uh, we played surf music, and Jerry was, uh, I remember he had a Mustang guitar, <clears throat> and uh, he was as good as they got. Mm -hmm. He was as good as anybody I ever, I ever heard on the, on the radio or a record, you know, playing that type of music. Okay, so we, um, of course, one of your biggest uh, musical band achievements is as a member of the Bad Seeds, mm -hmm. and of course they were assigned in the '60s with the Columbia Records. If you could tell us a little bit about how that came to be. Well, we were uh, we were a band called the Teddy Boys. Then it was uh, uh, it was uh, Lloyd McGlass and Jerry Foster, Charlie Brown, and we were playing in. Uh, some of us were still in high school. We were playing in uh, in a place called the Swing Bar up on Vine Street. I have no idea how we got in that place because <laughs> it was definitely an, a, a knife and gun club. Oh, you had to show a knife or a gun to get in the front door. And I mean, it was a tough joint. So somebody heard us playing there and uh, uh, we ended, uh, we had an audition, I think it was called the Whiskey A Go-Go under Ted mm -hmm. Kaczewski's Steakhouse on Walnut Street. Went down there, we got the gig there. So we left um, uh, the swing bar, we went down there and we got, we ended up playing, uh, I think it was four nights a week, which was a lot of music f for that time, <laughs> type of uh, time. And, um, like I said, some of the guys were in high school, and so we were the Teddy Boys. Somebody heard us uh, playing there uh, that that was going to put together a, 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 another group and and um, do this uh, situation out of New York. So we ended up going to New York. We made a couple of uh, what's called dubs mm -hmm. of some tunes that we had written, uh, and and 
our manager took those to Columbia Records. We went in there and, and um, at that time they changed our name to the Bad Seeds. And uh, we went in there and, uh, and we got signed with Columbia and uh, uh, recorded in the same studio as Andy Williams, Barbara Streisand, uh, Bob Dylan, the Birds, the whole, you know, mm -hmm. that's where it was happening, in that studio in New York City. And you had um, one of your bigger songs was King of the Soapbox? Yeah, we, that's, uh, that's one of the songs we got signed for, was King of the Soapbox. And the other side was He's Lying, that was written by Jerry Foster. But you wrote the King of the Soapbox? I wrote Box. King of the Soapbox, I did, yeah. It was, a, it was a, have no idea you know, <laughs> where that idea came from. It just it's well, pure inspiration. It was, I guess, yeah. If, if there is anything, if you can consider anything as being pure inspiration, that was, because bam, it just like came out of the ether, I guess. Yeah. You know, come on. Um, so the other side of your music career is that you are you work with guitars, repairing guitars, and you know a lot about the technical equipment. Mm -hmm. If you could talk a little bit about your interest in that area. Well, I uh, I uh, got interested in that because I couldn't find anybody to to do repair work on my instruments, and they'd if if uh, I'd take it into have it have it repaired or or adjusted or whatever, it would always come back in worse shape than it was when mm -hmm. I sent it away. So I thought, well, I'll get a couple screwdrivers and some wrenches and see what I can do. So I just kind of figured it out. And there wasn't any books that you could read mm -hmm. on it. There wasn't any any place that you could. It was just experimental, yeah. And then I met a guy by the name of Seymour Duncan. He worked at, uh, for Hughes Music, and they had a, uh, uh, we all called it Hanks out on um, uh, Dixie Highway in, uh, in, in Erlanger there, uh, down the street from Arcaros. And I was playing music in Arcaros at that time. That, the, the, the Arcaros is gone now, but I was playing music in there. Met uh, Seymour, and he was inter interested in, in uh, getting into guitars and, and, mm. and, and repairing them and building them and, and the pickups. And he'd come out to the house, my house, and uh, we'd tear a guitar apart and see how it was made and, and put it back together and trying to improve it mm -hmm. this way or that way, you know. Wow. So um, I guess the last question I have is about the Northern Kentucky music scene. Um, I was just wondering what your impression, like what you, how, why this is exhibit is important to you and what your impressions of Northern K Kentucky as a music scene are, your thoughts on that. Well, the, the musicians in Northern Kentucky, they're, they're they're as good as anybody in the country, and, and they have been. You know, I remember playing, when I started playing, I was, uh, I, there was a guy by the name of Dave Diener who played, uh, played guitar. He had this old Stratocaster. I think it was a 57 Stratocaster, and and um, he would show me some things, and he was just a phenomenal guitar player. And um, and the, the band, name of the band was the Castaways. I ended up playing with them, those guys for, the the beginning of my uh, music uh, experiences, but uh, the guys in, in Northern Kentucky, they're they're as good as you can get. They're uh, they're they're I wouldn't say they were kind and gentle people, but <laughs> but they are they are good people. They're really good people. Mm -hmm. They'll help you out anytime. Yeah. You know, I remember um, um, Adrian Blue lived about two blocks away from me, and uh, I'd go down and and. Uh, and sit in his driveway and listen to his band play, you know, and he'd, he'd come up and we'd be in the garage in my, in my dad's house in the back and he'd come up and listen to us. And, oh, wow. And it was always, always sharing and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, there was, there were some weird things, but it was always sharing, you know. There was people, everybody knew each other and they liked listening to each other. Everybody knew each other. They liked what, they wanted to know what you were doing. They'd come and hear you and, and ask you questions about what you were doing and you go and hear them. But everybody was pretty much, except for the country guys, the guys that were into country music, they, they were as good as anybody else too, but uh, the guys that were into rock music and the birds and, and the Bo Brumbles and the Beatles and, you know, they, and, and uh, uh, the, the blues scene was, was getting really big in, uh, in, uh, in this area, and, and uh, everybody would be uh, 
swapping gear uh, ideas and mm -hmm. you know what how'd you get that sound and and what kind of amp are you using and, uh, you know I had this trouble with this amp what what you know have you had 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 any trouble with your equipment and um, it was, you know they're the they they're just really good guys they were they were dedicated to to music and they still are mm -hmm. I mean even oh, yeah. guys that have quit playing they're they're going out listening to bands or buying uh, CDs and records mm -hmm. and and uh, they they just keep up with it but it it is a, a disease and <laughs> once you get you get it uh, it's there's it's no really cure. hard to lay it down you know <laughs> yeah I laid it down for quite a while when when I was raising my son but uh, I wouldn't even listen to the radio because I it was it was a, a an addiction it mm. was <laughs> and the guys that are gonna know exactly and the girls that they're gonna know exactly what I'm talking yeah. about it's like it, it's an addiction it is but they're the best uh, northern Kentucky musicians they can go anywhere in the country in the world and just and, and the ones that I know and jump in and and do the do a, you know mm -hmm. a, a really excellent job anywhere in any type of music that you could throw at them all right. Well, thank you for coming into this talk to us today about your music experiences. And um, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.